Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, we got a bunch of new stickers that have come in over the past couple of weeks. Well I say a bunch, at least two. We've got one here from from the Ragsdale Creek Workshop and we've got another one here, a real pretty little sticker from uh, let me get it out of here from the Sierra uh, Sierra Specialty Auto these guys have got YouTube channels and of course like most people with YouTube channels they'd love for you to come over there and see what they're up to okay now I made myself a list of stuff so I wouldn't forget because every time I start a video I forget half the stuff I was going to say which is probably a good thing I don't know but anyway let's see I've done the stickers I'm going to show you a little uh, video of a plastic bottle opener made out of uh, uh, carbon fiber by Mr. Joe of Cup of Joe channel at C-U-P-P-A Cup of Joe and uh, he told me it wasn't strong enough to open bottles but I'll demonstrate it and uh, I, if, if, if you've made comments on my channel and I didn't reply or if it was two or three weeks before I replied I gotta tell you, YouTube's real sloppy about notifying me of comments or whatever, and it's improved over the past two or three months. There was there was a period of about six weeks they didn't notify me of comments at all, so they're improving. Anyway, I was I was watching uh, Mr. Pete the other day, and he showed a piece of sugar cane and reminded me of when I was a boy, I guess probably about six, living up in Oklahoma. Some folks on a farm near to us was raising sugar cane and we got the word that they were making molasses uh, syrup on some particular day. So we went over there and they had a, a cane press set up out there in, in the field, you know, and they had a big flat belt on it, running it off the, the uh, power take off the, side, the big flywheel on the side of a John Deere tractor is what they was running it off of and right beside it they had a big old cooker out there cooking uh, molasses and I, I, I remember seeing that every time that belt would start to slip on that cane press some guy would go over there with a dipper full of molasses and pour it on that belt and it stopped slipping must have been some powerful syrup and, uh, and that's when I learned about black strap molasses which is uh, the stuff that's closer to the metal in the cooker there and gets a little bit burnt. I never did like the black strap molasses. And so, you know, anyway, I remember that happening when I was a kid, just, just a little guy. We went over and bought a couple of buckets of syrup. And uh, I also was thinking about the, every now and then you see people do things that sort of stick with you for a long time. I remember when I was in high school, I worked in this Conoco station for a guy, he was an ex-car salesman, his name Vessie Kendrick, I can say that because he's been dead for several decades, and uh, he had an old buddy named Barker. They were both ex-car salesmen, and they were probably in their late 50s or, you know, early 60s, and mostly they would sit around in the gas station there in the office and tell tales about all the cars they sold and all the money they won gambling, and, and apparently they spent a good time of up in Alaska and they'd been in, been in all the houses of ill repute up there <clears throat> and uh, not that I know whether there's any there or not but anyhow Mr. Kendrick he never did any work actually he just sat there in a brand new shiny uh, Conoco uniform with a little stub cigar in his corner of his mouth sometimes he'd light it but mostly he just chewed on it and back then there was a model of Chevrolet that if you put the the gas nozzle in it, put it on automatic, <coughs> excuse me, put it on auto shut off, the darn thing would puke back about a half a cup of, of uh, gasoline out on the ground. And uh, so I had one of those Chevrolets in there and I, I put the hose in and I thought I'd be through checking the oil and everything before it got ready to shut off. But I was it and there, ka chunk and, you know, puked out that half a cup of uh, gasoline. And the guy got indignant about it and wanted me to knock off a gallon of gas. And I told him, it's just a little bit of gas that, is, that splattered out. I can't give you a gallon of gas. No, and he insisted on it. So I went in and told Mr. Kendrick. So Mr. Kendrick come 
put up, folded up his newspaper and got up and walked out there and looked on the ground and he says, that ain't no gallon of gas. And the guy, yeah, he says, I want a gallon of gas off. I said, you run my tank over. And so he said, I'll show you a gallon of gas. And he zeroed the, the numbers on one of the pumps there, took the nozzle and he just sprayed it out there across the concrete. And the way the station was made, you had a concrete strip straight out from the station out to the street. But it was wide enough for cars to park lengthways on it by the pumps. Then on either side of that, you had, you know, asphalt. And he had a brand new asphalt driveway just fixed up on both sides of that. Everything was looking really neat, shiny. He run that gallon of gas out there on that concrete. And it covered up all the concrete. It ran halfway down both sides of the, of the asphalt. And that guy would just, uh, just stand with his mouth kind of open looking at that. It was a good thing that Mr. Kendrick never, hardly ever lit that cigar because, you know, I mean, he put a lot, he had a whole gallon of gas out there on the driveway. And a gallon of gas can cover a whole lot of area, you know. The guy just handed him his money and got in his car and took off. He quit arguing right there on the spot. <laughs> so I thought that, I thought that was a, a memorable moment uh, that I never did forget. All right, anyway, today we're going to get on with, uh, working on the plasma table and or I think I'm going to work on it today. I've got to fix the, the lights. I've got some replacement lights in here and and I've got to move things around and such and then I'll get back to welding on the table but I have done some welding and we'll show you how it looked and I did the garage door up because I don't want to cause cancer in California on none of our viewers or fellow creators that are out there. So, I guess I'll stop talking and start showing. Now, one of the more interesting channels that I watch is called Cup of Joe. As uh, opposed to Cup of Juice or Cup of Water or something. It's Cup, C-U-P-P-A, Cup of Joe, J-O-E. And, of course, the creator's in there, his name is Joe. Sort of fits, don't it? Seems reasonable. And he's pretty good with a 3D printer and he's done a lot of stuff with it and he has been printing stuff from carbon fiber and this is carbon fiber these are the guys that I tried to cast in plaster a while back and so I thought well carbon fiber is supposed to be really super strong stuff and this once glued together is a complete uh, bottle opener which he told me it's not going to be strong enough to open a bottle. But then again, it's not glued together yet to find out just how strong that it really is. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some super glue and I'm going to put it together. And he, he, I didn't think that I could print carbon fiber. And the Dern stuff is also pretty expensive a roll. Seemed like it's 60 or $80 a roll for it. And... Uh, so I asked him to do me a favor and print me one of these connecting rod bottle openers and he did and sent it to me and if you're not watching Cup of Joe's channel you ought to because he, he's a smart guy and he does all kind of interesting things you know if you can't be smart at least watch smart people that's my theories I'm not smart so I watch smart people <laughs> that's the best way to do it and you, and you should have smart friends you know and that's just the way life goes. All right, we're gonna we're gonna coat this guy over with uh, super glue, and we're gonna glue it together. It's got pins there, so you could locate them in there and cast the thing in metal, like a person really ought to do, I guess. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm still on the on the kick of. Uh, Lost, lost PLA. Of course, this in this case, it would be lost uh, carbon fiber. Now, the good thing is that I understand that carbon fiber doesn't leave behind as much ash and other waste materials after it burns as uh, other stuff does. That burn it, I've got it. <clears throat> I missed it. Uh, is it going to come back apart? Can I move it? Dad, burn it, my fingers are sticking together. 
I shouldn't have been talking while I was doing this and I've got it off look at that I missed it right there and this little bugger is stuck he's not going anywhere <sighs> okay that burn it all I'm still gonna try to cast it I guess it'll just be a little misaligned can't believe it stuck so quick I guess carbon fiber likes to stick together with super glue well in the meantime you guys go over and watch Cup of Joe's channel a little bit I'm sure you'll like it and I'm gonna work on finding some investment plaster to, to cast this stuff in can't believe I messed that up so quick okay so Joe said this thing is in strong and tensile strength but not in cross-sectional strength so we're gonna see if it'll work as a bottle opener anyway even though I was warned not to it did it there you are stronger than Joe thought stronger than I thought it works I guess you guys figure that in every video I come over here and give you a shot of the outside world on my monitor and as you can tell by the shiny driveway it's still raining it's starting to look like the weather's stuck uh, you know the climate control is stuck on rain this has been going on for days not a heavy rain just a little wetter and everything rain all right, using a uh, piece of scrap, this piece here, I worked out uh, the hinging for this. Now this corner will be sitting straight up like that, and the leg will be sticking down. But for ease of demonstration here, this would be the pin that holds it in the straight position. And it's not really threaded. When I move it up like that, that will fold the leg up under the bottom under the bottom of the table and then the table will be about that thick okay that you know as thick as that you back up a little bit there. anyway the table will be this thick and then I can latch onto it with a hoist and take it up to the ceiling and store it out of the way well I said it'll be about this thick there'll be a motor sticking up so Overall, I, I calculated it would be about a foot thick. This is uh, seven inches here. So there's another five inches for motor and, and the rail it runs on and stuff. But as you can see, that's worked out fairly good there. Put the pin in the leg and hold it still. Hold it straight up. And pull this guy out of here I won't be using threaded bolts <laughs> this is this is the holes to make it work right and I didn't need to take anything off of this side here which I had anticipated having to do but positioning it like that it works out so there we are move on to the next thing which at this point will be to drill all the holes and in the corners and all the legs and all that sort of thing then I'll start welding things together if I have the hoist Okay, so I had a slight bozo, and let's assume that this is actually going vertically instead of horizontal like that. This is the position of the leg after uh, it's folded up under the table, okay? And then this is the, the support. The only part of the bozo that will require, this one leg will have to be drilled after I stick it on here because there's just a tiny bit of misalignment caused here by my bozo which was move this around the 
first try at that hole was actually in the wrong spot and originally I thought well I'll weld it up and re-drill it and then I looked at it a little bit longer decided I'll just run the end mill through there and the pin will stay in there because it'll have more than a half circle of the right size which it does because it's got more than a than a half circle of the right size as you can see there it can't it can't leave that hole so I'm not going to go to the trouble of welding the thing up and redoing some holes or remake that piece when I get to this particular leg I'll just poke a drill through it and drill a hole right there and, and then put the pin in it and it'll fit just as if I'd planned it that way well that's all folks uh, you all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber leave a comment if you got something to say and above all remember keep on keeping on bye now